Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Meno Lounge. This is the Anaheim Expo West edition. Coming in hot, really like literally five minutes ago, I had my hair in two ponytails because if you saw my room, we have cases and cases and cases of Manuel bars here. We have a special guest though. I mean, I wish she was here with us because boy, I know we would have a lot. Hey, I see you, Celine. I'm gonna pull you up here right now. I've been so excited running all around. Um, Celine, are you gonna come up from Fit Chick or Feisty Menopause? What would you let me know? I was gonna pull you up from Feisty Menopause. Let's see here. There's a little bit of noise happening uh, to the right here. Let's see. I'm trying to concentrate. Feisty Menopause. This is always a fun thing. All right. So we can hop in and do the thing. So um, this is a huge fit chick. Got it. I just sent you an invite. Hi. And I'm here. Hello. 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 So glad How you're here. How are you? Oh, I, I should have put my hair in two. I, I often wear two. Had I, I known. love it. I should have just left it in and then we could have been 20 <laughs> or I could do the thing over here on this side. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know if you heard. Just oops, coming in hot. <laughs> Coming in hot from um, Anaheim, literally Mickey across the street. Oh, um, really? Because Expo West is the largest nat uh, natural food show. Have you ever been? Have I ever been? Uh, yes. No. Okay, well, you should come next time. There's 70,000 people here, um, 40,000 food buyers. So our team's all flying in today. We moved three pallets of, of Menowell bars. It's just been insane, I know. Oh. So but I couldn't wait for this. So I'm not in my usual, I'm in a hotel, but I've got to do the thing, right? right? Okay, That's Celine Yeager, I am so excited. Hit play, not pause, podcaster, journalist. I even brought this with me from the Bay Area. I'm not <laughs> kidding. I love this book so much. We're going to talk about that. Thank you. You've written over 25 books. You've got a midlife woman's um, newsletter, which I want to talk about that. Just started. Just started. Yeah. Started. So exciting. I hope that's not me. There you go. Oh, am I back? Yep. Okay. Yep. Did Gravel Cycle Hall of Fame inductee. I forgot about that one. <laughs> that is so boss. I, I mean, come on. We got to start there. <laughs> what does that mean? How did that happen? The great questions, really great questions. Um, thank you for having me. Let me let me center myself. <laughs> thank you for having me. Take so it in. I, take it in. Yeah. In my in my previous life, um, before I got involved with all of this midlife uh, messaging and, and the podcast and everything. I was a semi-professional bike racer, if you will. So I spent a lot of time. It was usually mountain bike racing. I did a lot of stage racing. Um, I've done triathlon and Ironman. And then I, I, for people who don't know, there's a discipline in cycling called gravel racing. And it's, it's, it looks like what you might think of Tour de France kind of bikes to look like, except they have very fat tires. So they're meant to go more off-road, but not necessarily like a mountain bike, right? Um, and they have very long events. Like there's an event in Kansas that's 200 plus miles. I've raced across Michigan. Yeah, they're very long. <laughs> they're very long. With the, sometimes they're, those they're, big tires, that requires incredible what? endurance with those tires, right? I mean, you're all that rubber attached to the You road, obviously you know, know, really know the sport some. Yes, <laughs> it does. It takes a lot of energy. But, um, you know, so I, I not only raced, but I wrote for Bicycling uh, Magazine. I was their fitness editor for about 27 years, you know, a very long time. Wrote a bunch of books, wrote gravel. I, I was very enamored with gravel. Um, so it's kind of the writing that I always like to do. It feels very playful and random and kind of crazy because you're just taking these bikes and you're like, okay, I guess we're going through the stream and, you know, through this woods now. So when it, be, when it became more popular, I really gravitated toward it. And it felt like something that anybody who, was, who liked bicycling would enjoy, you know, who liked adventure. And I got involved in trying to get more women in, in some of these big events. And, you know, flash forward, I don't know, 15 years later or so, 
they have they have a gravel cycling hall of fame it got established and people have to nominate you to be in it and i got nominated a few times this year and then a you know a panel of your peers votes and i got voted in this year so i'm it's very like i'm still just like wow it's very cool it's so amazing yeah. Yeah. it's so unique and different and i love um, you know that you just embrace if that's it sounds like that's your personality anyway to, to <laughs> just really embrace the adventure and um, but and I, I noticed then you know just watching you I learned about you actually from Barb Sobel who's probably watching with us our clinical nutritionist oh, nice. and I knew about you because of Roar right. but Barb said you gotta reach out to Celine because she should be on the mental lounge I love this book and so we've just been like da -da 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 all the time but how you brought that same energy and commitment and passion to midlife and menopause. <laughs> That's a huge transition. How did that happen? Well, it happened because I hit it, <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest. Right, right. Yeah, so, um, you know, we wrote Roar in 2016 and not long after it came out, we got, you know, I started getting messages from people like, one chapter of menopause is not enough, right? And I was like, mm, you know, I. Neither Stacy nor I were quite in that life space yet. And um, I just wasn't, I didn't really know what else to say. Like I had, I was aware of it obviously, and I knew a lot, but boy, I didn't know anything. Like I thought I knew a lot. Right. But I knew You nothing. think you know a lot until you're in it. Until, and then yeah. like, so, whoa, yeah. But looking back, even at that time, you know, maybe just a couple of years later, sometime in my mid forties, I would wake up like, like a, a Palm Springs sprinkler, just like, you know, just like soaking crazy. Right. And, you know, sometimes that would happen when I trained really hard anyway. So it was easy to be like, eh. but then I would just also wake up like the world was coming apart, you know, like for no reason, three o'clock in the morning, just being like, feeling like everything was, was awful. And I was not that I was dying, but like, I, I couldn't calm, like it just felt like impending doom, right. you know, that, that sort of. Just feel. that stress, everything that's happening in your life, spinning, coming at you, bing, 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 bing. Yeah, and I like, lay oh, there, like go. coming back from 30, trying to talk myself down. But again, like there's a lot of stuff going on in your life and it's easy to just be like, because you think of these classic things, you think of like the hot flashes or, I don't know, like I was still cycling. It just didn't, I didn't put two and two together until much later. Yeah. Anyway, like it became very clear that we needed to do this next level book, you know, for Roar. And I started talking to the publishers about it. I was sort of entering that space myself a bit, you know, age wise. And Stacy was working on a course. And um, so we were just like, yeah, this, this makes some sense. And then I sort of swam straight into it, like sort of sort of out of nowhere. I felt like I had no power. You know, my muscle tone just like went you know, it's like, what's happening? Like, what is going and on? It felt overnight. It's a lot for somebody that is at the the um, athletic ability of you. And so, you know, first of all, when your your body is changing and you don't have that strength, but you are starting from such a high level and think most women don't have that that much muscle, basically. Um, yeah, well, and I've always been menopause. very muscly, you know, and it, and it, it, I, and I never really lifted that much because I, you know, I, I did some to just stay like core strength and that, but never really lifted heavy or any of that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, Stacy and I were start starting to work on this project. The Feisty had kind of like, I hadn't met Feisty yet, but that like, I was just literally like, I don't think I can write this book with you, Stacy, because they, I don't know what's happening. Like, I'm kind of a mess, you know, so she- That makes it perfect. <laughs> yeah, right. So she's just like, calm down, you know, and she's like, you've got to start lifting heavy, you know, this is what's happening to your muscles and your satellite cells and all this, you know, science. And she talked about, like, now we know so much more, but back then, like this whole idea that, you know, estrogen is, is in your brain, you know, and it, it helps with your neurotransmitters and your moods. And that's actually where these anxiety bouts are coming from and hot flashes are coming from and all this stuff. And I was like, why don't people know this? Why doesn't anybody know this? Why? We have to know this. And then, you know, Feisty did like contact me. They're like, you want to do a webinar? I'm like, you should have a podcast. Two weeks later, I'm doing a podcast. So it all happened really, really quickly. Yeah. Um, and I will, you know, I'll be totally transparent. Like the night before we launched that podcast, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I was because of all the taboo and the stigma and all the stuff wrapped up in it. How, I was just like. How old were you? How old were you when that happened? I was just 50. Yeah. 
Like I had just turned. Like just in that place. Just in that be, place. Almost, Thing, the, the wheels came off the bus about 49. Mm -hmm. you know? right. like, that's when I was just like. But like Classic. I, you know, at 50, I won a big race that I had, you know, I've won five times. And I was just like, okay, like one, once I had my ducks in a line, I felt confident I could help write the book. I felt confident I could talk about it. But I was still like the trepidation of being the face of this thing that people were so ashamed of and didn't want to talk about was, and was honestly very difficult. That you are, right? What are, what are your fellow athletes going to think of you if now all of a all sudden you're menopausal, right? Right. So, like, oh, totally. Yeah. But I'm like, shame on, like, I felt like if I don't do this, when I have all of these experts that I've been interviewing for 20 years that I know I could get on the show, and a couple athletes that would talk, like, I'm like, if I don't do it, then I just keep everybody who's experiencing what I'm experiencing feeling the same shame and stigma that I feel. And like, we, no, like, we can't do this. And it's like, it has been the most rewarding work of my life by far. I, I'm, I'm right, I'm right there with you, sister, like owning that space. And then all the women that have come around and we're all linking arms in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so, sorry, housekeeper. So it's <laughs> fulfilling. Um, uh, so I know exactly what you're saying. And so you, we, you keep referring to Stacy. So just in case oh, people I'm don't sorry. know, Dr. Um, Sims. Dr. Yeah, Stacey like, Sims. As if everybody knows. But <laughs> well, yeah, they do, uh... but let's just make sure we give her her due too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Stacy Sims, who, you know, really is the pioneering voice in this space. You know, a lot of people have caught up. It's great. We're starting to see research. But she was the first woman I ever saw at coaching conferences, at training conferences, talking about the menstrual cycle for god's sakes talking about how it affected like i i never heard people i was at a usa cycling coaching conference i was like oh my god like, you know, it's just like, and that's when i told her i'm like you need a book and i'll help you and she's like cool let's do it right and that's how it started so yeah oh beautiful well maybe we'll have another conversation and then the three of us can go even deeper on all the yeah. science because I, I know I know what you guys have put in this incredible book. And if you haven't already, make sure you get next level. And I, I know you're like, oh no, no, no. but I no, I, I mean I literally it. brought it with me and I'm not, it looks backwards. I know when you hold it on camera, but it's not really yeah, you can. so um <laughs> make sure you get it because one of the things I love about the book is the last chapter pulling it all together because it's a playbook for you so yeah. if you don't know where to start or you're already in it i mean i'm 58 i'm i'm learning new things every day and i'm having these conversations and there's an excellent excellent um toolkit so love 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 um let's talk about you know for me um the reason why i stepped into this conversation from two other businesses all around business um is because of my weight gain and i mm. felt horrible horrible um you know i'm five one you know, i gave so over 10 you're five pounds one, so you're not I'm five, tall yeah. no place for it to go yeah. and you know i've been a runner in my past i've run lots of half marathons one full marathon and that was enough for me I but um <laughs> but uh you know so not not you know i still have plenty of body fat so my muscle density was not you know like yours by any stretch of the imagination but you know no place for that weight to go so i wanted to have something that i could have to handle the sugar cravings mm. and so i want to talk how did um how did weight gain come into your world because you have such you know so much muscle so your metabolism is stoked much higher faster hotter than most women so did you have any issues around that as well even though you were in such great shape you know i did i it, they weren't as um pronounced as some women have and i'm i'm sensitive to that because i this is a obviously a very sensitive conversation and i hear about it as you do all the time in my community and i get very upset with people who say like who dismiss it or you know who minimize it because it's it is something that we all go through and body image issues are very real no matter where you fall on that spectrum right and when you're talking about people who are interested in performance it 100 percent matters um so yeah i mean that was one of the first things like i you know i my weight they talk about the weight shifting i definitely had more of a shift you know around my waistline which was kind of weird and uh became puffier for lack of a better you know lack of a better word yeah. i will say the 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 one thing that really really helped and you know i know you're going to ask later about the like my key 
uh, takeaways, like starting to lift heavy was a huge, huge yes. thing for me. It like really, really helped. Um, to help put some of that muscle back, probably helped get the metabolism sort of back in line. And then I took a very hard look at what I was fueling and maybe more importantly, how I wasn't. Mm. Because the first thing that people do when things start shifting is they retreat to that sort of diet culture. I'm going to, I have to eat less. Right. I have to eat less. And that right. was actually Zero the calories. worst thing that I, that I could have done mm -hmm. because everything was just sort of like, it was stubbornly getting worse. And I was just like, this is not good. Mm -hmm. So I just was like, okay, I'm going to take the advice that I have given over and over and over again. <laughs> and I am going to actually like really eat, you know, and I'm like, I, my breakfast now is ridiculous, but it holds me over to like, one o'clock in the afternoon like i really eat and you eat good I, big breakfast protein rich i'm protein guessing. and fiber fiber is like an undersung hero of this time, i would right? say fiber is our bff yeah. i mean our birth everything 25 it, it to 30 percent right metabolic right. health your gut health your brain health your hormonal health it's so underappreciated right it's so right. underappreciated i mean we I all hear protein 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 because protein, protein, i guess it's sexy but like right. fiber is you like right there with it so right Right. Once I started really, really paying attention to that, like I stabilized very well. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in a good place and I've you know, been able to stay there. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anyone who doesn't take a little ride. Yeah. Well, well, and I, we have the body, you know, no body shaming, right? This is a no, no judgment ju zone, but women also, if we don't feel good about ourselves, you know, for me, my confidence was kind of rocked during that period. Oh, yeah. But let's get real. Heart disease kills. It's the number one killer of women. Yep. And so that's why our circumference of our waist, 35 inches or less, is so important because, you know, we have an OBGYN on our team also. <laughs> and um, because, you know, that's what keeps us, you know, minimizes our risk for a cardiac event. And so we have to talk about that. Yeah. The, looking cute in your cycling uh, shorts <laughs> or, you know, yeah. although that whole padded thing in the middle, not that cute, I'm just saying. Uh, but, uh, you know, but feeling good about that, it's important, but more important that we don't have or minimize a risk for a cardiac event. So yeah. really, really huge. Um, okay, now you said the word resistance training, lifting heavy, and that to me is sort of the, thank you, <laughs> the cheat code of, um, of metabolism and helping manage so we can eat more, so we can eat more protein, we can eat more fiber if we are listing heavy. So should we just talk about that, go right into that? Yeah, we should because, I mean, women can lose i mean there was a study i think it's 2021 maybe 2022 they found that this they they, they tracked a group of women they lost 10 percent of their appendicular mass their arms and their legs from from early perimenopause to late perimenopause alone yeah that's a lot a lot like that is a lot lot yeah over a short period of time so like the muscle loss thing is real and yeah that not only affects your performance, but it also t affects your metabolism and your insulin sensitivity, all the things that muscle does for you. You know, your, your muscle is your, is your metabolic health. Your muscle is your independence, right? You know, your mobility, your, your joy, is, you know, to be able to do all the things you, you want. Literally, Celine, I mean, you would have been proud of me. I'm appreciated for that. Yeah. Like Join when I lift heavy, nothing hurts. Like I don't have knee pain or hip pain or achy things or when I run. Like, yeah, all of it. Because when you're strong, then you don't. All those things are doing what they're supposed to do, right? So it yeah. is. If there's nothing else, and I say it all the time, I'm like, they should call it spicy muscle pause. Like I talk about it all the time. But like, if if you do nothing else, like that is the number one thing you can do for yourself. It supports literally everything else in your life. Yeah, and it feels really badass to be strong. It, like, yes, it, it makes does. You feel good. Yeah. I was I was gonna tell you I I did that times you know ten x yesterday we we moved three pallets worth of bars like literally two hundred and seventy one cases out of a, a U haul into you know three different locations and like this, I'm passing all these boxes boxes and I just felt proud of myself how strong I was to do two hundred and seventy one cases <laughs> of product I was That's freaking so exhausted much. last. <laughs> No, I was done at 11 o'clock, like hot shower. I'm sure you were. You know, but I, I just, 
I noticed that because I am committed and prioritize lifting weights and I'm still building up, you know, my how strong and how much I lift, but progressive overload. And I was able to get through six hours of this physical labor at 59 kicking ass. So what you're saying awesome. is a thousand percent, you yeah. know? So the thing that scares women, though, I hear it all the time. I'm sure you do too. Oh, no. is the You're not going to say heavy. I'm not no, Don't, no, don't say both. Okay. I'm moving on. That's what you're going to say. I'm like, that's, like, say that's still like last five minutes, you know, like bulking up. No, I think women get now, they're not going to be muscle, you know, bodybuilders. Yeah. Good luck. Not going to happen. Yeah. But, but the word heavy is the new bulky. So right. women are afraid of heavy. So talk about that. And, you know, you talk about that in the book about progressing yeah. um, to heavier. So let's help. Let's help everybody. Totally. Like if you've never lifted, like you don't want to go in and grab a barbell and just start trying to do like, you know, that that's a recipe for disaster and you're not going to come back. But, right. you know, so you definitely want to get get fit to get strong, if you will, you know, work on your core strength. If you can, if you can even just hire a trainer for just a few sessions, it makes all the difference in the world. Like it'll just help your confidence. You'll walk in, you'll know what to do. Cause I, I totally get it. You walk into the room, weight room, and you're just like, I don't know, man. Like, you're like you don't where know what you're doing. Do it's, I start and then you yeah. drift over to the dumbbell rack. It's just, that's what happens. Yeah. It's just not, it, 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 it's, it is intimidating. So like having that confidence of being like, I know what I'm doing. I know how to progress makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, it's just like so many, so many women are afraid to lift heavy because I think partly we've, we've told them that they, that eight to 10 pounds is what they should be lifting. Like all like shape, fitness, Cosmo, like all the magazines Those, forever. were just like, we're like three pounds or do you know, Dr. Vonda, right? Oh, I'm, love, I'm she's friends with right. Her, yes. Yes. So Vonda's like, ah, oh, no more pink. Two pounders, you know. It's a bag of cat food. Right. Think about the things you lift in your life. It is like it's nothing. You need to be able to lift up here. But so, like, you're not lifting it a bunch of times. You're just like, and you're not, not asking you to like herniate yourself, you know. But just like lift something that is truly heavy five times, put it down, and do that like four more times. Like that's, yeah. you will feel so good. It like. And the research that's coming out now with heavy lifting and brain health is fascinating. Mm. You know, it, it generates a hormone called uh, irisin, mm. which is very good for your brain and helps build your brain and connectivity. It's really good for brain health. They had a whole session on on it. They were talking about power lifting at the Menopause Society meeting last year. So I was like, this is amazing. Things and then they said, well, you don't necessarily want to tell your clients to do that. I'm like, yes, you do. But anyway. Um, so yeah, if you can just like get a trainer would be my first bit of advice. And it is, it's just, it is all relative. So no, you may never have a 200 pound barbell, who cares? But you wanna just like, you wanna lift in a way that is truly heavy and you lift heavy stuff in your life. You lift suitcases, you lift this stuff, you, mer you move the furniture around. Like it's gonna help you be like, again, independent. You're gonna live a long time. You're gonna live maybe 30 years post menopause. Yeah. You want them to be strong. You want to be really capable. I love, love that you um, just called out, think about what we're already lifting, whether that's a five or 10 pound bag of cat food or dog food, um, furniture, we're already lifting heavy things. So we don't need to be scared yeah. when you go in the gym of the heavy the heavy right. thing. When I first started doing the barbell, I just used the bell with not, oh, the bar with nothing totally. on it. Right. Yes, the bar. You want to get that. You want to get that down. <laughs> you know, it's a little weird to lift the bar. They're like, where do I put this right. thing? But just the bar itself is heavy. You can yeah. start there, and it just totally. helps you get more comfortable. I also did it in a hotel gym because there was nobody oh, in nice. there, you know, so I could just yeah. play around and and feel my way. But I I love that advice about getting a trainer, getting a few routines, you know, a push pull, yeah. uh, leg day, yeah. and then you're good to go, exactly. and you know what to do. It doesn't take stick that with much. that until you other master thing. it. Yeah. Like people think they need to be there in an hour. Like literally I'm in uh, 20 yeah. minutes, you know, it doesn't take that much. Yeah. A I little, it, it's very strong medicine. And when you know what to do, then you can be in and out. If you don't know what to do, yeah. you're wandering around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. like, I hope that person leaves and then I can go <laughs> over there. Okay. So let's dive into your tips. We may have kind of, uh, Lifting was the so first much. one. So we I already think, covered that one. Yeah. I um, love it. So these are tips on how to help women 
feel stronger, better, all the good things, more feisty yeah. in mid in, during menopause. If you do yeah. nothing else, lift. Lift, 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 lift. It is your it is your muscle bank for life. Like you need it for your metabolic health, your muscle metabolism. Bank. Right. You need it, need it, need it. Make a it's deposit. It's gonna help you stay like independent and badass for the rest of your life. Lift. Um, prioritize recovery. I I don't know about you, but I'm hearing and I it's 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 starting to really bother me. I'm hearing this messaging out there that women in this phase of life should sh shouldn't work out hard because of cortisol like cortisol is becoming like this mm. demon you know like mm -hmm. well cortisol is harder to manage which is true so you shouldn't do anything that spikes it which isn't true like if you care about performance you need cortisol you need cortisol mm. for exercise you need it for life you need it to adapt mm. you also then need to bring it back down because of course you don't want to live in that high cortisol state right all the time like nobody's right. like that's yeah. not so you need to maybe not blow off the things that you used to blow off. It's like your cool downs, self massage, real massage, you know, mindfulness, just for taking the time to make sure that you're really taking care of your mobility and taking care of your mindfulness and just bringing down that cortisol after workout. But by all means, please, please, please don't give up the workout. Okay. You said something really um, upstream, I'm going to say, about cortisol because especially with aerobics right we we're now telling women you don't need to just go so hard on the hit and i know dr St stacy's she's like mm, i know she's <laughs> hard to see the like no yeah. you got to get that heart rate up which we do right that goes back to yeah. heart health um but not raised not increasing all that cortisol because then stress belly fat and not from the you know glamour perspective but from the health perspective so this is important so you're you're saying from all the research is that cortisol is good, but it's how we recover, how we manage it. Yes, yes, you need it. You can like, it, it is, you know, I, I liken sort of like the, the whole conversation around stress and around cortisol. I mean, I think of it as like a violin string or a guitar string, like without any, everything is limp. There's no music, there's nothing, there's no productivity. With too much, the string snaps, there's no music, it's not good for you. But Got just it. the right amount, like, makes beautiful music for life. You get your adaptations. You can do like that's how I think about stress. That's how I think about cortisol. Like, you need it to hit those high. You you need it to do all this stuff, and you want to be vital. You want to be able to do these things. You just have to respect your recovery. And it does, you know, with age and with hormones, it does take more to recover. That's it takes true. longer. Recovery takes longer. It's and true. I know, for me, eat and your protein after your workout. <laughs> have your snack. Fuel your workouts, my God, please. You know, and it helps manage all that. Yeah, that's a huge, I, I hope people take that away as much as lifting heavy because, yeah. and especially, you know, those of us who are gung-ho and you get in the gym and you're like, okay, I'm doing the thing and you go hard and then uh, that maybe not later the day, but the next day and the next day after that, you feel terrible and then you don't want to go back and that's not good either no. so really managing that recovery having a hard workout so but when that you still want to go back again and yeah. then the day, <laughs> you day after. definitely want to be able to go back again. Yeah. yeah yeah so managing and you that recovery. Need to do it every day no. every other day right yeah four days variety week, is good for you four days a week. beautiful okay we got that so we're lifting heavy we're, we're managing and prioritizing our recovery i love it i love that so much i thought you were going to say protein okay go ahead. <laughs> I would say get your sleep straight. I mean, I, you know, and I know that's a challenge. It can be really challenging for a lot of women in this time of life. But, you know, for the past three and a half years that I've been going to the meetings and immersed in all of this, especially this emerging research, you know, they're linking so much of like short sleep, insomnia during especially the menopause transition to higher risk of stroke, higher risk of heart disease, higher risk of dementia. You know, we're all concerned with the brain health and all concerned with that. Yeah. Sleep is when you recover. Sleep is the only time your brain takes out the trash. Yeah. You know, I mean, you'll hear Lisa Moscone talking about that right. all right. month as she's on her right. tour. But right. it's true. Like, I wrote about the glymphatic system for AARP years mm. ago. Mm. Like, and it's exciting. It's like you, your brain has this system that when you sleep, it opens up and literally dumps out the toxins. And that's why, like, short sleep is so bad for your, your cognitive health and your, your brain health. Yeah. So, 
we are at a challenging place as midlife women going through this hormonal transition because sleep can be disrupted. I totally get it. It's just, I would put that really high on your list of things to address. Yes. You know, there's lots of things you can do. Hormone therapy helps some women, especially if you're having night sweats and that kind of stuff is keeping you up. Right. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy is gold standard for insomnia. It, it does not have to be super involved. There's a lot of things you can do. It's a matter of really just making that a priority number one because that's a big domino exactly. and it just knocks down a lot of other stuff in your life. Huge. Those of us who have birthed children or had infants, you know, in our lives, remember those days when oh, yeah. was, none of my babies slept. None of them. Not none of them. I never thought I'd sleep through no. the night again. No. <laughs> like... And I was just, you know, ma managing life with my eyes closed. And it yeah. feels so much, you know, like that during that stage. Yeah. But I find going to bed earlier, you know, around nine, like I start making my way around 930 so I can be in bed lights out 10 o'clock. Yeah. Because if I wake up, at least I've had a good five or six, you know, I'm in there ahead of time. Interrupted. Yeah. Going, yeah. going. To a second. Let's see. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. We're back. We're back. You so yeah, go to bed early. It's a good little hack. Okay. What else do you have in your uh, toolkit over there, Celine? We sort of we sort of touched on this. Uh, we well, we we hit fiber pretty hard, but I was gonna say, please eat enough. I mean, everybody. There's this whole idea like I need to eat less. I need to eat less. I need to eat less. That often really does backfire. It often really does. Like your body's just like. I don't know what's happening and it doesn't, it's not working well, you're, everything's getting depressed, you're not getting the results you want. If you fuel yourself, you're going to feel better, you're going to work out better, you're going to burn more energy, you're going to burn more calories, everything is going to be better for you. Um, you know, so have those, don't be afraid of carbs. Complex carbs that are rich in fiber are really good for your brain and your activity and all of this stuff. Eat your protein, don't be afraid. Like if you really fuel yourself, you won't be snacking all the time. You won't be like hangry, all of these things. It's just so much, life gets so much better. It is. When you... is. You, you, and that fuel is energy, yeah. calories are energy, and we need energy, especially in midlife. So fill up on those fibrous foods, get your fiber in, they keep you full. Yeah. It's really huge, not not to mention all the other wonderful things that it does for our gut health, brain health, all, you know, all the parts of our body, but as, we always worry as, as you know, humans now, like, oh, I'm going to be hungry. Well, fiber is it, that it, secret. It is amazing what it does. Yeah. <laughs> like, it really does hold you over. And, yeah, I mean, people are so hung up on macro counting, but I'm always like, just count your fiber for a couple of days. See where you're yeah. at, you know? Like, you have so many things that are just, like, they are in line with mainstream, but, like, like right over here. <laughs> kind of like, you know, that you're a gravel cyclist. The same thing. Like, it's just, like, right over here. <laughs> I love it. Love, She's right on the parallel. Love. And then, you know, honestly, finally, and I think about this every single day these days, um, don't get sucked into the doom loop. You know, like, I'm really glad that menopause is out there. People are talking about it. But now we are, um, we're, we're a community that is being targeted by predatory marketing. We have a lot of money and we, we're just we are on the receiving end of a lot of uh, people who want our money. And we are on the receiving end of a lot of like doom and gloom and scare tactics. And it can now make people just dread the summer life and feel terrible about it. And I feel like that wasn't my intent when I started all this at all. Like I wanted to actually create a space that was positive because I didn't want all that negativity into the universe. And honestly, I think that this can be one of the most powerful times of life. I mean, you know, I, I have sort of emerged from the transition feeling more stable and calm and happy than I have. I, I mean, maybe my moods are more stable than they've ever been. And I give far less Fs than I've ever given about anything or right. like what people think about me. And that is amazing. Like, we should not right. diminish, like, the powerful transformation that this can bring in our lives because it really can. So don't get caught in the doom loop. Yes, there are challenges, 100%. And there's lots of help there for you, and you should get it. Um, but also uh, believe that your future is ahead of you, and it's you got a bright one. We're so aligned.
find. I love that so much. I mean, that is exactly our message, my message in this space for all the, the reasons that you talked about. We're wiser, we have, you know, we have more experience, we can make better decisions, our intuition, we can actually trust it and not worry yeah. about what everybody else thinks. We probably have more money at this <laughs> point because we've been doing what we've been doing, you know, for a lot yeah. longer. And um, even, you know, for Men well, we wrote, I wrote a manifesta and part of it oh, is nice believe one. the best is yet to come, you know? So I just think this is our kick-ass time, so. I always right say that. Live forward. Yes. Don't uh, don't spend your life looking over your shoulder in the rearview mirror. Like there's a lot ahead, and it's great. Live forward. Plus, if you're not looking forward on a bike, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, trouble. <laughs> trouble. I should tell you, my husband came down here to help me get some of this set up before the team comes, and the main issue was: is there room for for my Pinarello in the in the <laughs> van? That was one of my favorite bikes. I had a Pinarello uh, road bike forever. He's, yeah. he's off now. I don't know where he is. Like, I'm taking awesome. the train. I'm going down the thing. I thought you'd appreciate that. Okay, so I'd love to ask you this question. Oh, okay. What does the phrase meno well mean to you? Oh, meno well means that you have taken care of yourself and that you are, you've addressed like, the issues in your life that are maybe waking you up, literally, maybe waking you up, yeah. and you have done an assessment, which is a good time of life to do this, and you are now living forward with purpose and uh, optimism and gratitude. Mm, I love that, and the gratitude, right? And the assessment, there's an assessment in the <laughs> book. Perfect. I know you didn't plan it, it right but I thought that's a great time to remind everybody, get next I didn't level. tell her to do this. I thank you. Don't, don't, hey, own it, okay? This is a badass book I written by two it. badass women. Books take years off your life, right? so I appreciate it. Plus, that. that muscle on the woman there uh, is like, yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Excellent inspiration. This incredible book, Next Level, by Celine Yeager and Stacey Sims, you 100% need to read it. It's just yet another Bible in menopause. So the assessment and then pulling it all together in the back is freaking amazing. I schlepped it all the way down here. That's so good. Celine, where do we find all things Celine besides your 25 plus <laughs> books that you have written in the world? All on Amazon. So incredible. You're so prolific. Thank um, you. I, you know, I, I had this mentor once who said, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So that really applies to you. Huh? <laughs> good. I, I would just tell people, go to feistymenopause.com. That's where you can find the newsletter and the blog and the, the podcast and all things me. And that will, that will take you to the rest of my universe, too. That's, that's your best portal. I love it. Okay. And one last sure. thing. You got to tell us this story about that hat. I'm so glad I'm wearing a hat today, but we'll tell us the hat. That's amazing. I, I, um, I, I took a, a trip to Vegas with my daughter. Um, it was real, it was really, really fun. She, she was, I think 15 at the time. And, uh, we went into the, one of these shops where they had all these bejeweled hats and I was trying them on. And I tried this one on. I was like, that's a good hat. So I bought, you know, I bought it and I like, because my hair is always on in my face, blah, blah, blah. and I wear a lot of hats because I train, and a lot of times, like, the hair just isn't happening because I just got off the bike and the helmet and this and that. So I have a series of, like, podcast professional hats. <laughs> like, when, when I need something to sort of pull myself together, I'm like, a hat. And I have, like, you know, so it's just not, like, a ball cap, you know, because I have a lot of those, too. But. Yeah, I'm not mad at a ball cap. I'm no, no, I like you too. I was so happy when you came on and you had a hat on. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, we're going to be, yeah. Super fun. I, I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time and hopping on and all of your authoring of incredible books and Thank now you. you know just leaning into menopause just a wonderful bright voice in this conversation we need so many women speaking about it and empowering women so thank you for all you're doing really you too thanks for having me i'm was glad to have this conversation yeah again please let's do it again all right okay take care be well thank you thanks everyone bye-bye bye thanks everyone